Hi, I'm Donna from The Masquerade, and I've been cleaning up this old 15, Singer 15 treadle machine, and uh, it's running like a top now. Very quiet. I love it. Um, it needs a new belt. Look, someone tried to duct tape their belt together. And now that I have the machine, I'm going to put the belt on the real way, and I want to show you how to do it. Um, these belts are easy to find online, Amazon, eBay. They go for about 15 or 20 bucks. They come a standard 72 to 74 inches. They're about 3 eighths inch thick. And they'll fit any treadle machine. Not, it doesn't matter uh, the size of your treadle table. So anyway, they fit just about any treadle machine. And I'm going to put one on this 15. So I'm going to take this one off. And to do that, you'll see if you don't have a belt on there to begin with, obviously there's no problem. Um, if you do have a belt on there, you're going to see that it's stapled together. And I'm just going to try to pull that staple apart. Actually, I'm not even going to reuse this, this um, belt so I can cut the belt. You need a really good pair of scissors to get through that. And you just feed it off the machine. I probably saved this uh, staple here in case I need it for another another belt, a quick fix. I don't need the belt. It's old, it's dry, it's brittle, but I'm going to save that little staple there. So the new belt comes with a staple in the end of it for you already. How convenient. And all you need to do is measure the size of your belt and make sure that you've cut it so that it fits exactly. And then you need to put a hole in the belt in order to put that staple through the hole. Now, the belt is round, so if you put the staple in a hole that's too close to the edge, it's going to rip and it's not going to hold. So it's best to hold the belt with a pair of pliers over a surface you don't care about marring. And this is where a second set of hands comes in very handy. You can have somebody hold it for you so that it doesn't twist. And then you can use a very narrow, a small little nail, you know, and you can hammer it and make your hole. But you don't want that belt to twist and you want to make sure the hole's right in the middle of the round and about a quarter of an inch from the end of the the belt. So there's that way to do it if you don't have any fancy tools. But you could also have a treadle pliers, which is what I have here. And it will cut my round leather nicely right where I want it to cut it. And then when I'm all done cutting it, I can insert my leather into the pliers. And you can see it has a punch right in there. And it's going to punch it right where it needs to punch the hole when I squeeze it tight and it won't turn. But not everybody has a pair of these. However, they are available. If you look hard enough, you might be able to find a pair on eBay. They're um, treadle belt pliers. So here's what we do to make sure that it's gonna fit. You're gonna feed the belt down into the holes. It's gonna go over your over your treadle wheel. It's got to get in underneath that guard. Move that out of the way. There we go. It's got to get into under that guard and go un, into the back treadle. And then it's going to go around the big wheel. Okay, so once you get it, you got to put it around this wheel. goes through this channel. I'm just feeding it around here. And then it's got to go, whoops, I'm caught on something. It's got to come up. This one has a, a release right here. So it comes up through the release. Some treadles don't. And you got to make sure that it's tight on that wheel. And then it's going to go up through the hole in your base. And then you're going to try to get it up through this hole. 
you have to make sure that it stays on this wheel all the way around. And it's tricky to do when you're by yourself. But once you get it around the whole wheel and you're pulling on it, it should stay. So I've got it around the wheel and I'm pulling on it from up top. See, I've got it nice and tight. And I'm pulling on it and it's making my needle go up and down. And everything's fine. So when I make sure it's nice and taut and it's around the wheel at the top and the wheel at the bottom and I'm looking at the staple end and I've got it as tight as I can make it. I'm pulling, 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 pulling. Now I know right exactly where I need to cut. It has to be even with the end that has the staple in it. So I marked it with a pencil. And now when I take this <laughs> I don't want to lose it, but I might end up dropping it. Now I can take this right where my mark is here, and I can cut it either with scissors or I'm going to cut it with my pliers here. And I have to make sure that I'm going to slice it right on that mark. That blade is right on the mark. And now when I squeeze... It's going to cut it right off for me. So this is just extra, this little piece. And I'll show you with the extra what actually happens with it. Now when I want to put the hole in it, it's going to know right where I, I need that hole to be, about a quarter of an inch from the end. And I'm just going to place that inside my pliers. And I'm going to squeeze. And it's going to make a punch. And this is a fresh new one, so it kind of just poked at it. It didn't go all the way through. I can push at it with my awl and see it didn't go all the way through. So I'm going to turn it around to the other side and poke at it from the other side as well with my little punch. It's a leather punch. That time I felt it go all the way through. So you can take that little end that you cut off and you can practice until you get good at it. And now I can see that it goes all the way through. And then what happens is I would take the other end, line it up, and put the staple through both holes. Now that I've practiced, I'm going to do it on the real thing. So I'm going to put that in there. Make sure it's right in the center. Squeeze. Oh, I felt it go all the way through the very first time. There. That plug comes out. Okay. So now I'm going to take my other end. And I know it's going to be perfect. I can see that it's going to be perfect. So I can actually release it from the lower wheel. Okay, so now that I've released it from the wheel, it's kind of loose and I can work on it. And all I want to do is put that staple right in there. And then just squeeze it with my pliers. That's it. That's as simple as that. It feels loose, but that's because I don't have it on the belt. I mean, I don't have it on the wheel on the bottom. But that staple is going to hold it, believe it or not. There's no need for duct tape. That staple is going to hold it nice and tight. So now I'm going to put it back on the bottom wheel. There it goes. So let's try it out. Make sure that it's coming toward me before I start treadling. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, she's so sweet. 
she's quieter now and she's not making any problems. The bobbin had so much gunk in it. It was horrible. I had to take it all apart and bathe it in kerosene and give it some oil. That is a sweet stitch. Look at that. Beautiful. Got a fuzz on the back. Very nice. Perfect stitch. So I'll show you how to thread it, seeing I have it out so here. So it comes from the spool. It goes over this back hook right here. It comes down around the tension discs, between the tension discs. Then I make sure I get it in front of this bar. And I put it behind the bar. And it's supposed to go through that that wire. Mine's broken, but yours, yours will have a little curly on it. And then you go through the the needle pick up. I raise it to the top. Then it comes into this little hook here. So it goes behind this hook here. And then it gets threaded from left to right. That's it. The bobbin is a round oscillating bobbin. It's something, it's a side loading bobbin. It's loaded just like the featherweights are loaded, actually. If you can see it in there. It has it has a lever here so that you can take the bobbin casing in and out so you can pull the bobbin out. And that's what the bobbin looks like. When the bobbin is loaded, it's going to pull off the bobbin and make the bobbin spin clockwise. So when you're putting it in, it's going to come around the bobbin and down off the right hand side, like the number nine. And then up to the right, and you're going to place it into the bobbin casing. And you're going to take that thread, and you're going to run it through that little slot that's there. And I hold my thumb on the bobbin so it doesn't spin. And then I pull it down so it goes behind that leaf spring. And then it pops into that little hole, and it's free to move. And that's where it needs to be. Then when I go to put it in, I make sure that it's on the left side of that hook. And I open up my lever so I can hold my bobbin. I'm going to place it in so that that bar that's down there, that post, goes right in the middle of my bobbin. And that my, my hook is in the up position. And it's going to fit right into that slot and click. Now when I hold my top thread, I'm just going to hold on to it, and I'm going to wind the hand crank wheel towards me one time. You can see my thread will go down. It's going to go around the bobbin, and it's going to pick up that bobbin thread. And when I pull up, it comes right up here where the needle is and I can pull it up to the top of the plate. That's how I thread the 15. And then when I want to stitch with it, I just put the needle down. I make sure that the treadle wheel on the right, the hand wheel is coming towards me. And as I pull it towards me, I can feel my pedal moving and then I just keep the pedal moving in that same direction, back and forth, back and forth. 
heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. And if I go fast, the machine goes fast. If I go slow, the machine goes slow. I can needle down so I can pivot. I'll show you what my feet are doing. stop then the machine stops and when I go the machine goes go fast go slow and stop that's it it makes a perfect stitch I'm so happy with that so that's my singer 15 and that's how you put on a treadle belt